gentlemen to data science for everyone today we're going to be looking at R markdown and we're going to be covering the basics so R markdown provides a unified authoring framework for data science this combines your code results and your prose or your writing R markdown documents are fully reproducible and uh, support dozens of output formats such as PDFs word files slideshows and more Let's get started on looking at some other uh, aspects of R Markdown. These are designed to be used in three specific ways. One, for communication to decision makers who want to focus on the conclusions, but not the code behind the analysis. Two, for collaborating with other data scientists, including your future self, who are interested in both your conclusions and how to reach them via the code. Three, as an environment in which to do data science as a lab notebook where you can capture not only what you did, but also what you were thinking about. Files are actually plain text files that has an extension of the RMD nature. It contains three important types of content. First is the YAML header, and this is usually uh, surrounded by dashes. Then we have chunks of R code surrounded by um, backwards tick marks, usually three of them. And then we also have text mix in with simple text formatting such as uh, uh, hashtags uh, for headings and underscores for italics. And we'll go over um, more of these uh, formatting types later on. So the basics of R Markdown, the first thing that you actually are going to need is an R Markdown file. So go up, click, and you can grab here R Markdown. Okay, you click that, and again, we're, we're right now we're currently using R Studio Cloud. So this may take a, a few minutes to actually load up for you. Um, I may speed up this section here, uh, but uh, right now I'm doing this in the basics so that you guys can see what it'd be like for the first time. Make sure and install the required packages. So do you want to install these required packages? Yes. And again, this may take a few minutes for you uh, for it to install just be patient okay so when this uh, new document section stands up you actually have your choice between a document or a presentation okay today we're going to be uh, specifically working with documents now you have your choice between doing HTML PDF and Word uh, since a lot of people want PDFs I'm going to start with a PDF today and we'll talk about each of the sections as we go along. And so today I'm going to be using just um, R Markdown Basics. And again, my name is Markham Reed as the author. And then I'm going to go here and click OK. And so we'll see that this is going to pop up with uh, a lot of stuff that's predetermined. OK, so we do have our YAML header here. OK, we have an R markdown chunk and then we also have in this section here we have just some basic text so we have a header here we have a hyperlink and again we have some bold text so <clears throat> I'm gonna go through each of these pieces a little bit more later on um, as we need to but the one thing that I want to start out with in this is for you guys to know where to get help Okay, so go up to your help profile here, and then you can actually see here there is a quick markdown reference. This is, should be something that you guys should get very accustomed to. So when you click on it, it will actually open up this reference over here, and you can see that this gives you how to make emphasis such as bold or italics, um, headers, lists, ordered lists. And again, we can do everything from links, images, block quotes, um, code blocks, all of these. And we'll, we'll go through each of these in turn as we need. Uh, but remember, whenever you're looking at something and you don't know how to do it, always make sure to go to the help section and check out the Markdown Quick Reference. The next thing that you need to know is this cheat sheet area here. Now you can get your R uh, Studio cheat sheets along with all other types of cheat sheets. But today we're going to look at, again, here's this uh, R Markdown cheat sheet. We can also do the R Markdown reference guide. And so this should pull up a, uh, a PDF for you, okay, with all the different types of references. And again, this is just a fantastic cheat sheet for you guys to have. 
I would suggest if um, maybe if you have an unstable internet connection, uh, a lot of the times I keep an actual copied printout with myself at home just so that I can uh, go through everything. And this has everything from uh, different types of templates, the basic YAML that you need, LaTeX syntax uh, if you're needing that, as well as syntax for slide formatting and slide displays. Okay, and all of these, we will go through all of these in this series, but for now, we're just going to be talking about, again, just the R Markdown basics. So once you have your R Markdown chunk um, actually created, okay, so this is, this is, for example, this is an R Markdown chunk here. Okay, we have it, uh, there's some code in here that we're not going to talk about right now, but you can run these chunks with this little run current chunk icon here, the little green arrow, and it will run. You can see that they run pretty fast, but you can also go and run something like this empty cars, and you could hit, uh, it's either control shift enter or command shift enter, depending on uh, what you are actually, uh, what system that you're on. So, and you notice here that the, the output actually comes down to the bottom. So this doesn't actually compile the entire document, but you can actually see what your output is um, for each of your code chunks. So we can also go back down here to the plot. And again, I'm gonna use the uh, command shift enter whenever I run it. And so again, you can even see here that plots actually are popping up. Um, and again, this isn't our own code. This is just the uh, generic fill code, uh, the template code that they give us. Now, once you actually want to have an actual document, and so we'll go back up here, and notice here I have inside the YAML, so again, that's with these three dashes above and below. All of this inside here is YAML code. Uh, the title will be R Markdown Basics. Author will be my name. Um, the date, again, it just fills in today's date. Later on, I'll show you how to auto format the date. And then our output, we want a PDF file. So here we can click the knit button, or you can also hit Control Shift K. And so let this knit. And again, you wanna you wanna give it a file name because again, I haven't saved anything yet. Um, so let me just do uh, demo um, markdown. And so then if you notice here, what's actually happening is it will actually compile our text and it should have a, a basic PDF that pops out with all of the information that was displayed inside of our code. So again, just from the, uh, the YAML header, we see here that it formats uh, our title along with the author name as well as the date. And then we see here that we have a nicely formatted PDF file. Now let me go back and to the file section. So when you go back, you can actually look and see what's going on here. Is that it actually created inside of our file folder and our project folder, it created our an R markdown file. Okay, so demo R markdown. And then it also created a PDF with that name. And so we'll open we can again we can click that and we can open that back up. So then this way you can create reports uh, for your boss. You can send them out to whoever needs them. So let's say that you wanted to uh, put this in as an HTML. Okay, so then we can click an HTML um, and it will actually automatically compile for us as HTML text. So then you guys can put it up on your company website or again, if you have it on uh, your own internal company server, you can have it that way as well. And this allows you to have all of the formatting as well. And you can create your own CSS uh, to put in the background. So now let's go over text formatting. Pull up your Markdown Quick Reference and have it on the side um, so that we can kind of refer to that as we as we go along. So to start out with, let's talk about headers. So just as you would with HTML or Word documents, you have a variety of different headers. So this first header is usually, we can call this a header one or an, uh, an H1 tag. And this will be the largest header that you would have. And then here we can also have some example text. Now you can uh, use underscores or um, asterisks in order to have uh, italics or bold. So a single asterisk or an underscore is uh, for italics, but let's use this as for emphasis. Okay. 
uh, on uh, text and then so we can also have here is some bold or strong text okay um, and then we can also do another a header two and this will be a slightly smaller header so I'll just do h2 now let's also grab um, maybe something else. Now you can do unordered lists. So this is something like maybe a grocery list or or, or whatnot. And you can use an asterisk or you can use um, uh, a dash. Uh, so item, um, let's maybe make just a basic uh, grocery list. So I need uh, printer paper, okay. Um, I also need uh, food. Okay, now inside of food, maybe I want to have uh, multiple different items. So let's say I want apples and I want bananas. Uh, and then let's also do maybe an ordered list. Okay, so let me actually do uh, an H3 here. Let me give a little bit more space so you can see this a little bit better. So inside of maybe our H3, we can also do an ordered list. So an ordered list is again is using ordinal numbers. Now in their example, okay, they have one, two, three. This this is nice and all whenever you're typing it out, but it can lead to some issues if you want to edit items. I would highly suggest you do something like this. So one here is uh, the first item. Now the trick here is actually to do one dot again. And this, this is the second item. And then one dot, this is the third item. Now, let's actually run this so we can uh, and knit this so we can see what the output looks like. And we'll uh, review this for just a moment. So here we see uh, all of our YAML information. Okay, so we have our first header, which is extra large here. And we have uh, some example text. We have our emphasis or our italics text here. And then here's some bold text. Now we have our H2, which we had an unordered list. So we had printer paper, food, and we have a second apples and bananas. Now, if you notice here, we have our, uh, our third header. Okay, and we also have, um, notice, remember we did one dot one dot one dot now it will automatically format this for us so that it'll do one two three now the importance of this is maybe you want to reorder you may want to reorder your list so uh, let's say that we want to move this third item let's cut it and let's paste it in so then we would have the first item the third item the second item and if we run this again, you don't have to actually do as much formatting. So if you can have the one dot, one dot, one dot. So if you add in another item, you just have one dot. Um, and we see that now we have the first item, this is the third item, this is the second item. And notice though that our formatting still remains consistent. Another thing that we can do is we can also have uh, subcategories in here. So uh, let's do, um, maybe just do a dash here. Here is a sub, okay. Here is another. And then we can also go in and do one, one. And let's do a test one, test two. Save this and knit. And again, we see that just as uh, ever, uh, in the previous unordered lists, whenever we use the unordered list down here, it gives us our unordered lists. However, whenever we use the numbering system, okay, using the one dot again, it actually restarts our numbering as well. And we can continue on with our text from there.